This month we are sponsored by Scotty Grills. And what is Scotty Grills? Scotty Grills is an awesome stainless steel flat pack design fired by wood, charcoal, or gas. So easy to assemble that you can assemble it in two minutes. Even I can assemble it in two minutes. And better than that, you can put it back up in its own heat resistant packaging in 15 minutes. How do you win this bad boy? You subscribe to Texas Truck Channel in the month of June and comment on any of our videos and you are automatically entered for it. All right, one take, Craig. Welcome to Texas Truck Channel, I'm Brian. I'm Craig. And this is the freaking awesome Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek. We've driven this thing before. I don't think we've actually put it on film, but we've driven it at events and it does shockingly well off-road. So we've had a week with it now to really kind of live with it and talk about it. We have had the platinum version of this about a year and a half ago. And man, there's just something about this that we're both just, we're just meshing with. So let's talk about the looks first of all, bring it up to the nose. There's a lot going on here, but you've got the updated Nissan grill with the white lettering, which I really, really like. Um, on the platinum, this was lighting up, this one's not. Got some fake snorkels here, which will probably not last the test of time very well, the way that they're pointing at the sun. And then you got this cool kind of industrial looking grill and then a big old snout down here. It's kind of busy, but kind of tough. And I don't know, I dig it. Is this, is this a fog light? Uh, no, oh. absolutely, no, no. no. Um, oh, down here, oh, yeah, oh, down oh, here, okay, there's okay. a fog light. Yeah, 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 it does have fog lights, but that is not on the side. There's something about it that works though. You do have the 360 camera, which is not the most uh, high resolution, like up to date one, but it does the job, it works just fine. So let's come around here and let's talk about wheels and tires, because that makes such a big difference on this. Tires show intent. Oh man, the tires show intent, yes. I cannot believe that this crossover, not full frame SUV, has Toyo Open, Open Country ATs. I am just flabbergasted that they put these on here. It's a 265-60-18, and I love the 18 part because look how beefy the sidewall is. There's a lot of absorption when you're doing off-road stuff. It's not like it has a tough suspension behind it, but it does ride a 5 eighths of an inch taller. 5 eighths? 5 eighths of an inch taller. Very specific about that Nissan. And it has specific springs and dampers all around. So it does have specific suspension to this, but it's not a Bilstein or a Fox or something that's branded like that. Um, more to come on our hill test. We're filming that right after this. I'm really, really curious to see what these guys do because that's the most meat you can get on a crossover today, flat out. Now, the wheels. I've had a lot of criticism from people saying, oh, these are bro locks or, or faux locks. Yeah, they are, dude, but go on to Summit Racing and look at any affordable wheel and they're fakers too, so get over it. All right, coming around. Black mirror caps matches the black roof. The black roof matches the freaking awesome roof rack. It's rated for 220 pounds, which look, that's while in motion. So yes, your rooftop tent and you sleeping in it is more than that, but when you're static, it can handle more than that. While on the highway, it can handle that kind of weight and pull on this. It's gonna handle any rooftop tent you throw on there. That's what I'm getting at. If you're sitting still at a campsite and you're gonna go up there and land there, you're fine. It's gonna work out just fine. Gas cap test. <laughs> oh what? yes! They got oh. it right! Oh my god. Oh my gosh, Craig, is this the first Japanese automaker we've had to get that right? That's, I mean, I think so. Oh wait, Honda. Honda, Honda does right. it too. Honda does it. Yep. Everyone, just copy it. I don't, yep. I don't know if there's a patent to do that, but just pay it and do it. Yeah, that's the way you do it. It's too easy. This rear three quarter. If you kind of get right there, this three quarter look is so cool. I love that the. It's not a wraparound taillight, but it has a connecting bar in the middle with a logo, dimensional letters for Pathfinder and Rock Creek, and then these fins, these bars coming out further past, kind of feel like a spoiler. I dig it a lot. Good shot. All wheel drive. You've also got the tow package on this. It can tow about 5,000 pounds. This acts as a recovery point and you've got a seven way pin, not a four way pin, which I find very interesting. And let's see here. That's about all there is. Let's pop open that hood and check out the VQ goodness. Time for the power. Okay, all well, right. That hood's actually not that heavy. Okay. Uh, I got our prop rod right here. And take a look oh, right here. Look, look right here. If you've ever worked on a 350Z or an Xterra, you know this timing chain cover by heart. <laughs> this is a straight up VQ. It's just, it's their in-house V6. I freaking love this thing. It sounds incredible. All it needs is a colder intake. And I want to bring out some numbers for you because I can't remember anything because I'm old. The base Pathfinder makes 284 horsepower. This one makes 295. The other one makes 259 torque. This makes 270. So the Rock Creek actually gives you more power. How is it doing that? Well, look, the motor's exactly the same. What they've done is they've allowed you to put premium fuel and take advantage of the advanced timing to make more horsepower. That's what's happening here. Mechanically, it's the same, but it gets it done. And we're gonna talk about the drive. In today's age of four popper turbos and mild hybrid nonsense, this is so refreshing and so charming. I love it. Let's check out the interior. 
All right, time for the interior of the Rock Creek Edition Pathfinder. And Brian, let's open up this power tailgate. Hit the button here. Um, oh, hang on. Hit the button here and pull because oh. it's old school charm, Brian. That's what it is. I'm um, good with that. Hey, you know what that'll do? You know what that'll do? Always work. Never break. Exactly. Never break. So, Brian, you get back here. This is a feature. I think it's like a three hundred and something dollar option. You get these little pads that go on the back of the seats, and it's just kind of oh, velcroy pads, okay. which is perfect because then you just put down the seat somehow. Oh, like that, really easy actually. How do you get it back? And it, look, it's, it's protected. So if you have anything that's wet or damp, it doesn't Dude. mess up the cloth behind. Yeah. That's actually pretty genius. It's kind of Subaru. -y. I'm okay with that. Uh, but yeah, the seats, you just pull it back, and it, and it works. And you can also recline it a little bit if you're sitting back there. You want it all the way back, oh, a little forward. That's much. Yeah. So okay. you can pimp it out if you want to. Um, also under here, look at this. Whoa. There's actually some storage yeah. under there. And I like this. You want to get your jack stuff? There oh, you I didn't go. Know did that. Yeah, so you can okay. get all your jack and all that fun stuff. And some. Oh, there's your adhesive we always talk about. Oh, yeah, of course. So put that back in, lower this. That's, there's more to this tailgate, though, Brian. Look, it's a simple handle. You just pull it down. That's it. And then it, that oh. noise we heard earlier, it is soft closed. So you just put it, it pulls it too. Oh. Problem solved. I never knew how those worked. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to the second row, Brian. Before we get in there, though, look at your door over there. Whoa. Look at that monster cup holder for two, handle for the phone, more cup holders down on the bottom, kind of a tri or a dual level door. That is awesome. To get into the back, you should be able to hit that button. It should just plop. But it doesn't work. Forward, but, but it doesn't work. But, but wait, there's one behind, too. There's one behind. You pull it. Yeah, it's not working either. It's not working either. Okay, all right. Anyways, but normally that would work and you could get in the back and there's decent room back here. But Brian, let's just talk about the second row because Sounds I can't good. get in the back. So there's there's that. First off, you get <laughs> so the- Wait, it's not third row anymore? <laughs> it's not anymore. <laughs> okay. So you get the captain's chair armrest, which is really nice. And you, you sit up a lot higher in the second row compared to the first row. First row is really low. This is really high, which is good because you can see. Reminds me of the old Pathfinders that did that. And but I wonder if it affects headroom. There's not a pano in here, but Brian, let's get in here and let's see what happens. I have high hopes for this because first of all, I get in. Oh, oh, what? Yeah, whoa, wow. Boy, okay, but do you see that. how high you're sitting? Look at oh, yeah. Well, if your kid gets car sick, car sick, or if you as the adult in the back gets car sick, you can see the road perfectly fine. Look, I could go on a road trip in this because I have plenty of room. Yep. It's not an issue. And the vents, look, they blow right by my head, which Ooh, is where I, I like need that. it. That's nice. You get tri-zone climate control on the Rock Creek, even though this is the top-loaded trim. Still good um, USB-C and A, because look, the kids don't have the newest tech, so they need the A back there. And right. you get mat pockets on both sides, so either one can navigate. Nice center console, which doesn't do a whole lot. There's just a bin and then cup holders, but it does move. You can... There's a little handle. Oh, pull it up. There you go. Oh, and wait, wait. you can wait. just move it out so you can walk a, through. That's how you get in the third row. That's how you get in the third row. You just walk through. <laughs> okay. So, we do that out of the way. Let's move to the front. All right, Brian. Uh, before you get in, I want you to see the door again. You get massive storage for your Hydro Flask bottle. Oh, yep, yep, yep. And then also part of this Rock Creek uh, package, well, not package, but an, an optional feature is this floor mat. That's got, it's kind of like a weather tech liner. It's going to hold all the mud, and it's been really good for us because we've got a lot of mud in it. And before we sit down in the seats, Brian, notice this orange stitching and the orange lettering in the back of the seat. What that means, Brian, is because it's orange. Wait, it means, wait, wait. You can go to your Instagram campsite. That's exactly right. So yes. it doesn't matter if it's a Honda and it's a Trail Sport or if it's a Ford and it's a Trimmer. It's orange, which means you can off-road. So right. let's get in and let's talk about all the goodness in here. I want to show the people to get the uh, gauges here because, Brian, look at that. Do you see that? Those are analog wait, wait. gauges. What is that? I've never seen that. There's before. a little sweep, and it's just like an old school charm, and it revs freely. It doesn't, ah, oh, it doesn't, ah, oh, it's so good. That part's good. That's actually for your second and third row seat belts. Don't be confused with the first row. I thought that's what was going on at first. That is not the case here. And Brian, now there's a little bit of an issue. We get to the uh, center stack, and well, it looks a little old. Um, it, it, it does creak, it's not the best materials. But look how this bezel, how wide it is. Yeah. You can get a wider one in the Platinum, the Rock Creek. You don't get that. You get a little bit smaller screen. Does make it look a little dated. It does work though. I mean, that's not really an issue per yeah, se. Stereo is good too. The biggest issue in this interior is the piano black everywhere. It just oh, you just yeah. see dust specks all over it, and that's a little bit of a problem. Especially going to be rough and tumble, getting dirty, and you're going to be scratching that. Just know that. Um, that aside, though, Brian. This interior, when this package, it works because it's supposed to be a little more rough and tumble, a little more, a little less refined. You're going to the campsite. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. With that, Brian. Oh, what are we? Oh, yes. I'm glad you pointed that out. Look at all this room under here. It might rain. We got a rain jacket down here. We got liquid death. We can put that down there if we want. Who knows what we wanted to put down there? We can well, put it down there. Plenty of room. Before we depart, can I point out one more thing? Yeah. See these buttons right here? Yeah. 
they line up perfectly. Last time I had a Pathfinder, <laughs> they were all over the place like crooked. <laughs> These look great. Fair enough. Fit and finish is up there. All right, let's see if we're taking it for a drive. We're in the Nissan Rock Creek Pathfinder, Brian, and Rock yes. Creek means we get more power, baby. How Two, much do we get? 295. 295. That means it should be a ripper. Hit it! Sport mode, traction, can't turn it off. Let's go. There we go. VQ, baby. Sounds Rips good. 6K, 65 and 60 miles an hour first off in 7.85 but it doesn't matter oh it doesn't don't worry about that it Ooh. sounds awesome getting there put it back to regular mode because this drive mode selector is perfect it does work real quick and it's Are nice you watching for it it goes the right sense. way yeah i will say this you're right it's 7.8 it's a little disappointing mm. i was expecting mid sevens I was expecting like six nine you owe me a cup of coffee because you were expecting six yeah but nine. you owe me one from previous so we're, we're even now the only thing I will say is the other car we tested the same day was a little slower too, so maybe there's something going on. I don't know. No, no, no. Anyways, but it does sound, you're right. You mentioned the sound. Yeah. It sounds great. I was outside filming the launches. Whoa. Sounds Whoa. good. Look, this old French V6 still got it. Oh, I'm man. And it's funny, when you open the hood, it literally looks like a 350Z V6 just turned sideways. It kind of is. Same timing cover, same valve cover, everything was the same. Look, it's kind of like Toyota had the V6, their 3.5, 2GR. They had it dialed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got the, they got the same thing going right. on here. That's Why mess says. with it? It works. It just works. keep making it. Agreed. Um, let's talk about what ride and drive real quick. Okay. Uh, the nine-speed trans is straight from Mercedes. Yes. Which is code for it works. Yeah, it works. Unlike something else we've been driving lately. It's slow. It's slow out of the hole. Yep. But then once you're rolling or if you're in a sport mode, like it's pretty good. If you're rolling yeah. like from 20, it'll it'll get it. It's not the best, but it's not clunky. It's not weird. And um, it's smooth and everything else. Smooth. Right. It's, yeah, nothing. Yeah. In terms of shock tuning. We went in a little bit of background. Last week we had the Honda Pilot Trail Sport, which had, I thought, pretty good dampening in it. Mm -hmm. I went straight from that to this, and my takeaway was, this is not a beacon of quality. Fair. But it's rugged and robust, and it looks rugged, and it looks the part, and it doesn't have the torque vectoring rear diff that Honda does, but we'll try it on the hill in a little bit and see if these tires are any good. And the flip side is, it's got a ton of charm. This is a true all-terrain tire. Yep. Um, we're going to see on the hill test how those actually help or not. My concern is that there's not enough differential in the rear to make use of them, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But it, the bigger concern is day in, day out, these are a little noisy. A little noisy, and in the wet, they like lock up the ABS immediately. Which, which is a problem a, for a lot of all trains. Sure, but it's super charming again. When it happens, you go, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun. I like this. But of, it also keeps it from uh, handling real well on the twisties either. So, yeah. look, it's a trade off. This, this trade -off. thing looks like the coolest mom or dad car at the middle school pickup line. Yes. And it drives like a minivan with all trains on it. Right. That's exactly what we're dealing with here. And the flip side, I had this problem. The last time we had this was a platinum trim. Yes. This is the most darty steering. Like it just is. It's, sup it's super quick on center, it but then is. you find yourself constantly making inputs. It's almost like driving an old Jeep Wrangler. It kind of is. And these tires aren't helping with that. But no. that's the trade off of having off vertibility. I'm excited to drive that. We'll see how that goes. Um, one thing I do want to point out, and you made a good point earlier about this versus the platinum and perception divulge. Yes. So the platinum, you have this expectation that this should be a luxurious, nice top trim, top trim, yeah. uh, quality material place to be. Right. Tech should be high, all that, because you're spending a lot of money for that at that point. It's more, yeah. Um, problem is, you're not getting much better than what you're getting in this Rock Creek Edition. You're not. The Rock no. Creek Edition, I have expectations of ruggedness and less high quality materials and more durable materials. Yes. And so now the interior works real well in this. Well, and then they've nailed that part. Yeah. Right? And the, so, stereo, the stereo bumps, the engine sounds awesome. Yeah. It's got the right wheel and tires. It's got the look. It looks incredible. Yes. The roof rack and all that crap. I'll, look, I'll say this. For crossover, look, Craig, you got to go buy a crossover SUV to go, quote unquote, overlanding in. Mm -hmm. This is the Pilot Trail Sport I might be flipping a coin on. Okay, that's fair. And look, this definitely is not that much faster than the Trail Sport, but it sounds and feels so much faster. Powertrain wise, I'm picking this over the Trail Sport. Agreed. Completely agree. Um, this is about six grand less as well. So yeah. there's a bit of a bargain. There's here. a lot of value here. And with those tires making some noise, I think we wrap it there. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the hill test. I cannot wait to get this thing with some wheels in the air. This could be the winner if it makes the hill test good. Yeah, we'll see. All right, stay tuned. <laughs>